all our heart. You just glorify him. The greatest thing you can do for God is to worship him, to give him an offering of praise. Can we stand up and just give him for one, two minutes? Tell him that he's glorified. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Father. and thank him. This is the second Sunday of the year. The second Sunday of the year. Thank him for the grace given. Thank him for the love he has shown to you. Thank him for the anointing that he has rested on you. Thank him for the favor God has released. Thank him for the open heaven. Somebody thank him for the open heaven. Thank him for the grace for abundance of rain. It is your year you will experience rain. Your life will experience rain. Your farm will experience rain. You shall not witness drugs in the name of Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and give him the praise that he deserves. Lord, I give him the praise that you deserve. The praise, the praise that you deserve. Somebody give him the praise he deserves. A praise offering, Lord. We bring a praise offering to you. Hallelujah. We bring a praise offering to you, my King. Bring a praise offering to you, the Lord of all the earth. We bring a praise offering to you, Jehovah Jesharon. We bring a praise offering, hallelujah. We come lifting our heart to you, lifting our soul to you, telling you, God, that you've done so much. And even this year, you will do more and more and more. Receive all the glory for keeping our children alive our wives alive, keeping our husbands alive, keeping our friends and well wishes alive. Bless your name for putting your blessings on our food and bread. Bless your name for, for blessing our wine and our oil. We bless you, Father, for the bread that we breathe in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You deserve it. You deserve the glory.
you deserve the thanks of our lips. Yes, Lord. Father, we are not in a hurry in your presence. Release the packages. Open the heaven. The healings that are needed today. Let thy word fall like a dew from heaven. Like the dew that falls on the mountain of Haman. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This year we declare the year of abundance of rain. Amen. Amen. And I have no doubt whatsoever that God is about to release. In fact, God has already released rain. You have to believe it, and um, you've got to know that this is a spiritual statement. And anytime God is speaking, we've got to catch up with what God is doing in the now. As a matter of fact, this year, God is on a fast lane. Amen. And people that are sensitive enough in the spirit will be able to grab what God is doing. If you're not really sensitive enough, you can grab from the flow of what God is doing. And you've got to understand that most of the messages we'll be preaching here this week, this year, will be more prophetic. And um, as you as you capture it, you know you will not remain the same again. Amen. Um, I continue to share today keys to unlocking abundance of rain. Keys to unlocking abundance of rain. Chapter two. I want us to know this: that everything you see in the physical realm has a spiritual mate. It's in the book of Isaiah 34, verse 16. Everything you see. In the physical realm, we are in, in the we live in the earth realm. And this is called the earth realm. Praise God. And from here to the cloud is about you know about 100 kilometers according to systematic theologians. So we live here. We, this is where we call the first heaven, and you have the second heaven, and you have the third heaven where we believe that in our God the ways. And the second heaven is where it is believed that the demonic realm, the principalities and powers. Principality dwells in the in the second heaven while we dwell in the you know first heaven. And that is why we need to pray the kind of prayer we saw in the book of John from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered violent and the men of violent takes it by force. There are certain prayers that will not break, you know, the ceilings of heaven, of the third second heaven, if you're not really forceful. And this is one of the reasons sometimes we do certain forceful prayers in order to unlock something in the realm of the spirit. Isaiah 33, 33 verse 16. The Bible tells us that uh, there is spiritual, physical, that is made to any, everything. Everything that has a spiritual face also have a physical face. And uh, in, also in the book of First Corinthians 15, reading from 16 to 14, you will discover that the Bible talks of the man of the doors and the man of heaven. You know, it talks of the heavenly man and the earthly man. It shows if you have an earthly man, you have heavenly man. If you have the man of the doors, you also have the man of heaven. So everything you see have two, two sides of the coin. Hello. In fact, some people say people have two character. Hello. The character they display in public and the one they display in secret places. And God help I and you if you have some too. Praise God. <laughs> so some of some people have the character they show. Only few people have the ability to be real, whether in the open places or in the secret places. And this is when we become more real to God. If you display the same character, you display in the secret places, in the open places. So everything in life, there are two kinds. When people tell you a story of what happened or how much they've been persecuted, there's also another side of the, of the story. Amen? So in life, there is two sides of everything. If there is physical rain, it means there is also a spiritual rain. And these are the things we don't understand because oftentimes we live in a world as if we don't know that there are spiritual side of it. Hello? And, and the demarcation from the spiritual and the physical is very tiny. Some of us think we have a, you know, a, a, um, a big demarcation. It's a very tiny. You know? All you need to do is to be spiritual enough to cross over from the physical realm to the spiritual realm. Now, what I want, to show, show, uh, I, want, I want us to know today, if there is physical realm, there is spiritual realm, please put that in your pocket. Hello? You know? And if you only if you only witnesses physical rain and not spiritual rain, then you are in trouble. Hello. Anytime it is showering, you've got to say, Lord, let it shower on me this year. We declare it in the year of what abundance of rain. And uh, you know, it's, fortunately for all that day, soon after the the night program by, by one, when we dismissed one a.m., some of you went downstairs and you saw it was raining. And I I see that as a, a statement. God was trying to tell us that this year is really going to be rain. 
Don't call it coincidence. Why must it rain by one when we dismiss? Hello? When we close for the night. It should have rained the, the next day or in the morning. But it rained immediately. It's 2015. It started raining. It's not coincidence. God was making a statement. And we must tap into it. Amen. Say to somebody, it's time for your rain. So, but I'm going to be sharing now the keys. How do we unlock this rain? I started last week. If you look at the book of uh, As of, As of Apostle 14, reading from 17, we are told that in the time of ignorance, shall we, although he did not leave himself without a witness, God did not leave himself without a witness, since he, he did good. What is the good he did? Giving you rain from heaven and fruitful seasons and satisfying your heart with food and happiness. And if you look at verse 16, you will discover Paul and I think Barnabas did a miracle somewhere in Lystra. And, they, uh, and the people wanted to worship him. They, you know, they, they, they say, oh, this guy is God. They've got so much power. There is something in them. We've got to worship him, him, them. So they went to sacrifice for him. And Paul and Barnabas started in a rush to the crowd where they wanted to sacrifice for him. And said, please, we are men like you. Amen. We thank God for that spirit. Because some of us, we want to be worshipped. Amen. When we do big stuff. That is why in the church, when God is using you, still be humble. Hello, somebody. Don't try to take the glory. Do things that see if you are not the one that did it. Hello. So they said, no, don't sacrifice for us. And he started telling them, if you look at verse 16, in the past, in the, in the past generation, he allowed all the nations to go their own way. But he said, even in that time, he revealed himself through rain. Hello? Through seasons of blessing and fruitfulness. He said, in other words, anytime God sends rain, as we saw in verse 17, he actually trying to reveal him, his, himself, his glory, his manifestations to you. Hello, somebody. Some of us do not know that even the rain we witness is a way of God communicating to us that, look, he's close to us. Most of us do not know that God is closer than you think. Hello? And rain is actually a miracle. Even physical rain is a miracle. So when you are experiencing physical rain, it means God is good. Because he can lock the heaven. Hello? So it seems to me that each time God gives you a miracle, He's your child. You know, protect your family. Hello, somebody. Give you life to see 2016. You must see that as a means of worshiping him. God does that we might worship him. Hello, somebody. In fact, most, most revelation of God, when God reveals himself to mankind, one of the reasons he does it is for you to worship him. When he reveals himself through miracles, signs and wonder, he does that in order to draw you closer. Hello? It's not for you to just continue to live in your own hedonistic in a way, but for you to know that indeed I am God and I'm there for you. So rain, as a matter of fact, is a sign of what? God faithfulness to us. So God said to me, if we as a church must experience abundance of rain, we must develop in our spirit of worship. Hello? Let's, you know, this year, let it be a year, you will declare in you know, a worship two hours in your room. Hello? You just praise him and worship him. You cannot praise and worship God and not conceive spiritually. Say to somebody, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. I, I, I know of this woman, you know, she, she married for about 30 years in Winner Chapel in my country. She did not conceive, but she declared 21 days praise and worship. She will just praise God and worship God for about six, about six hours or more. Hello? And when she was doing that, and she said she, she was hearing voice. She couldn't, you know, they, no, she, she, couldn't, she couldn't understand what was happening to her. And while in the midst of that, she conceived. And get, she, the day she knew that she was pregnant was the day she was giving birth in the hospital. Hello? She didn't know. The husband was telling her, you're getting fat, you need to exercise. But she didn't know she was pregnant. But she conceived in the midst of praise and worship. Hallelujah. you got to understand that if we must experience abundance of rain, it's not going to happen by whim, a lot by out of whim. You must be conscious. It must be intentional desire. We must say, Father, this is the year of worship. For the Bible says in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 23 to 24, you say, God is the spirit, and those who must worship him, must worship him in truth and in spirit. So if you aren't ready to be a man and woman of worship, don't say, oh, pastor declared the year of abundance of rain and I'm going through drought. Hello? You must intentionally log into the declaration of the year and believe God that this is your year. 
Tell me, in fact, as a merchant of fire, you cannot wash, you cannot make two hours in a day. Because you make two hours to watch television, to check Facebook, you know, to check your Twitter. You cannot make out two hours and just give him praise and give him praise and give him praise. Every day you just call him names and names and names. And God will not set you up. Hello, somebody. Said it's time for God to set you up through the art of worship. So we must be intentional. Hello? In our worship this year. Say to somebody, be intentional. You see, in books of Isaiah 43, verse 20, we are told in the book of Isaiah that, that God gave water you know, to the raven, to the beast of the earth, you know, so that they might worship him. Isaiah, shall we read? The animals of the feed will honor me, jackals and ostriches, because I provide water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. The Bible says the animals worship God. And the ostriches worship God when God provides water even for his creation. The instruments of creation honors God when he blesses me. And this is one of the reasons God's intention is to bless you. Because anytime God does a miracle in your life that makes you raise up your hand to him, hello, it brings glory, you know, the animals will begin to praise him. Hello? Even leaves, hello, flowers honors God when you are blessed. So your blessing brings glory to what? To him. Amen. Hello, somebody. This is why God is committed in blessing you. God is committed to bless you. God wants to empower your life. Because each time he does this, even when you don't praise him, donkeys will begin to praise him. Yeah. So we must understand that, that you know, you know, rain is actually sent so that you can worship him. When God releases rain, he means to, you know, draw your attention back to him again. In other words, the rain God is getting ready to release or he has released this year is not meant for your self-gratification or for your self-glory or a defilement. It's meant to honor him and bring glory and praise and power to the God of all the earth. And that God is your God. That God is your God. The God that we send rain is your God. The God that is sending rain is your God in the name of Jesus. It pleases the king of glory to honor you. And I see God saying in his spirit right now that I'm about to lift somebody up in this house. You will never go down again. The place you honor is the lowest place you will be in life. Because God will move you from glory to glory and to glory. I thought somebody should say a big amen to this. He's lifting you from glory to glory. You will not go down in the name of Jesus. I am prophesying to somebody that is afraid of the year. The Lord said, I should let you know you're no longer going down. Oh, the least you will be nice where you are. Because it's about to send rain in order to draw more of your worship from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In fact, in book of Zechariah chapter 14, reading from 16. Zechariah 14, reading from 15 to 16. God was talking to the oppressors of Israel. And he said to them, he said, from now on, if you do not go to Israel, to Jerusalem to worship, I no longer send rain. Then all the survivors from the nations that came against Jerusalem will go up year after year to worship the king. He said, the Lord of hosts, and to celebrate the festival of Boaz. Keep on going. But he said, should any of the families of the earth not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king? That's one of the reasons we go to pilgrimage to Israel. He said, the Lord of hosts, the, the Lord of hosts, rain will not fall on them. Now, this is how serious God takes what? Worship. In other words, rain comes through what? Worship. The Lord is again. And if the people of Egypt will not go up and enter, then, and enter, then rain will not fall on them. Now, worship is a means of entering. Hello? You enter into his presence. This will be the plague the Lord, the Lord inflicts on the nations who do not go up to celebrate the festival of both. So one of the ways to draw rain to your life is to develop spirit of worship. And Lord, worship should be intentional. Learn to worship God in your privacy. In fact, the real worship is not even the worship you do in the church. The real worship is the worship you do right in your bedroom. We are no one is watching. Amen. The word of, of, of wisdom we read this morning says, dance as if no one is watching. If you can dance in the altar and not in your bedroom, you don't know how to dance. And you aren't dancing for God. 
Hello, somebody. So we must develop a spirit of worship. This year, be a worshiper. Stop worshiping. Poo, 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 poo. Hello, and start worshiping. A lot of us, we only know how to worship, fight our neighbors, fight our friends, have un unforgiving spirit. But we must understand that the worship God wants us to do this morning, this year, is to worship him. This is the key. In fact, if there is any key, you must neglect, not the key of worship. Hello, if you worship, you will experience what? Miracle. Say to somebody, worship, 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 worship. In Jesus' name. We're looking at the key. The second key we must, and we must make sure we observe is to look up to heaven. We must look up to heaven for this spiritual reign. Looking up to heaven for spiritual reign. Psalms 75, 6-7. Assertion does not come from what? From the east, the west, or the south. We didn't see north here. Something is wrong with the north. Amen. Look, look for seven. He said, but, move on. He said, what? For God is the judge. He brings down one and he exhausts another. And when we're taking of rain, some of you think that your rain will come from your bases. Hello? You see, God will use them, but it's not going to come from them. God will have to open heaven for they to remember you. I said, matter of fact, no one will remember you unless God has touched their heart. Hello? Do you know it takes God for people to even give you a common card? To give you Christmas card? God must touch their life. Have you not been in a situation where you, you do so, so much for people, yet they don't remember you? Hello? Maybe God did not touch their heart, or God did, but they refused not to respond to the calling or to the bidding of God. So exhortation or rain does not come from what? Doesn't come from what? From the east. It doesn't come from the south. It doesn't come from the north or west. It comes from above. What happened? God will switch on the heart of men to begin to do things for you. And you've got to understand that all the blessing God has ordained for you in the year 2015 is not in heaven. But the power to unlock the blessing is in heaven. Hello? The blessing is here on earth. As a matter of fact, everything you will ever have on, in life, everything God has ordained for you is already there. It's already created. God is not waiting, thinking of creating, you know, trying to make a new car that you can drive. By law, trying to make a new clothes that you wear. Everything you need. The woman you marry is here on earth. It's not in heaven. Oh, nobody's talking to me right now. <laughs> you know, so when you pray, what God does is to lead you to the person. So you got to concentrate on, on what? Concentrate on God rather than a man. Because that is where the rain come, we come from. In the book of Deuteronomy, our, our scripture of the year. Remember the Deuteronomy? It says something, 28 verse 12. It said, the Lord will walk open unto you. The Lord will do what? Open unto you. Is it man? The treasures of heaven. A Lord somebody and we release rain in his season and bless the work of your hands and you will be the lender and know what? The borrower. Oh, yeah. The Lord will open, not Pastor Pio. A Lord somebody. So if I'm looking at Pastor Pio's table, I'm going to miss what God is doing in the now. A Lord. So you've got to make up your mind. I will seek God and worship him. I will look up to him. Because if you are looking unto men, you'll be disappointed. People will betray. And one of the reasons we get hurt when people betray us is because we put our trust on them or in them. As long as you do not stop putting your trust in men, you will continue to get hurt. But if you know that men will always hurt you, hello, even when they hurt you, you are not mad about it because you already know men are not perfect. I read the biography of a woman of God in my country, Dr. O. Ezekiel. He said that he, he imbibed one principle in his life as a minister. He said he knew that people hurt him. So he decided that even before they hurt him, he would have forgiven them. That he forgives people even before they get him hurt. Hello? So you've got to make up your mind that men are not perfect. People are people everywhere. People do the same thing everywhere. Hello? People hurt, people lie, people get angry, people betray. Hello, somebody? Therefore, don't put your trust on anybody. Hello? Even your husband or wife who love you can disappoint you. In, that number, in other words, if you really want to experience grace, look up to God. Learn to trust God. You've been trusting on the arms of your flesh for too long. But it's no longer time to trust on the arms of flesh. Only God, Jeremiah 14, 22. Tells you that only God. It's only God that will do it for you. Say to your neighbor, I know you can help me. Oh, please say that to somebody. I know you can't help me. I know you can't. <laughs> 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 
Bro, Mill, I'm looking at you. <laughs> but they know how they will help you. They can only help you if God switch on their, la- their heart. Hello? If God do not touch their heart, they can what? Help you. Can any of the worthless idols of the nation bring what rain? Hello? Or can the skies alone give showers? Are you not the Lord our God? We therefore put our hope in you. For you, we, you, for, for you have done all these things. We therefore put our hope on who? In God. Don't put your hope in your wife. Hello, somebody. Or your husband. Because you're going to get hurt. Hello. This year, put your hope in God. If you do, God will release rain. The idols of the nations will not do it. Our prime minister cannot help you. The economies of the world are breaking down every day. Hello, somebody. Economies are breaking. If you, about a year ago, Russian economy was very strong. But in the last four months, it's breaking down. And Putin was finding strength and solace in the economy. But thank God, God knows how to humble the pride of nations. Hello, somebody. Sometimes, if you, try, if you want to be pride in the art of flesh, God will switch off your flesh. Amen. Those that trust in the arms of flesh are fools. The Bible says, trust in the Lord. Do not trust in the arms of flesh. Trust in God to send rain. If you don't trust in when the rain comes, the rain will pass you by. If you're waiting for your uncle, for your brother, along, especially in third world where people wait for uncles and brothers and connections to be blessed. That is wrong mindset. Hello, somebody. Look unto God. Don't even put your hope in me. I can offer you anything. Everyone, even the presidents of this world, they rely on something. Hello? To stand where they are. Either some of them are worshiping God or the devil. What did I say? I said Jeremiah 17, 7 to 8. He said, blessed is the what? The man who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is that man. In other words, if you don't trust in, in God, cause be the man who, who do not trust in God. It's who, whose confidence indeed is the Lord. Whose conf- keep on going, confidence indeed is the Lord. Look at what the Bible says. He will be like what a tree planted by water. It sends its root out toward a stream. It doesn't fear when heat comes. Its foliage remain, its foliage remains green. It will not worry in a year of drought or cease producing what fruit. Even when the economy breaks down, when everyone is being retrenched, but for you, you're thinking, this is my year of rain. They lost somebody. So even if everyone retrenched, you will be the only one that will not be retrenched you know, in, your, in your workplace. Everyone has been sacked. You, know, you, know, you will be the one that will not be sacked. Because you have a revelation most of your colleagues do not have. Hello? Everyone has been intimidated in, at your workplace. And they, they, maybe they, those that are leading you are hurting and buzzing you around. But you feel so confident because you know you are like a tree planted by the river's side. It is only when you are trust, when you trust in him that you feel that way. Do you, have you realized that when you are sinning, you don't have confidence? Hello? But if you are doing the right thing in your heart, you know you're worshiping God, you're seeking him, you love him, you're doing the best you can, it's not that you're perfect. Even when the wind is blowing, the st- storm is blowing, there's tsunami all around you, you just know. Hello? You need nobody to tell you, but you know that God will take care of you. Oh, I thought somebody should have seen, seen, say a big amen. That amen is too weak. It's for you. Say a big amen. So when you are trusting God, believe that you are like a tree planted what? By the riverside. So trust him this way. This year. Put your confidence in him. Let the storm hit the houses of your neighbor. Hello. You will find out that even your own houses is in the midst of the storm, but nothing happens to it. When there was Katrina somewhere in U.S., you know, and I remember there's a man of God that he was a poor merchant. Hello, his house was in the midst of the Katrina, but all every other house collapsed apart from his own house. Hello, so the same thing still happens when everyone is catching disease, catching sickness, complaining. You're prospering, and they're asking you, say, "Come, oh boy, what is your secret?" Hello, somebody, and you laugh because you know it is the grace of God. It's not because of your own power. You just know where the source is coming from. The source of your prosperity, you know, is from God. People are getting worried because even if you don't have money, you're not worried because you know it's going to turn out, things is going to turn out right for you. And people are saying, what, why are you laughing all the time? 
So I don't know, but God. Hello, somebody. The reason is because you are planted by the riverside. You are not ordinary tree planted in the desert. Even when there is no rain, if you're planted by the riverside, you will still be drawing water. Hello, to grow. I see you draw rain in the name of Jesus Christ. So learn to do what? To trust God. Amen? Number three, we must become a willing soil. A soil that is ready to drink its rain or blessing. In books of, of, of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 7, we are told that the, 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 the ground draws rain. The ground we, you see, you know, it drinks rain. It sucks rain from heaven. Hello? Every one of us here are ground. We are lands. Amen? We are soil. But one of our problems or challenges, we don't know how to soak rain when God is sending rain. Am I preaching this morning? Yeah. You must make yourself, you know, you can find, learn, be a sponge this year. Learn to soak rain. God will send rain, but will you, are you able to soak it? Will you, you know, have open heart to soak it? In fact, if you, look, you, you read the book of Jeremiah 17, where we read before, if you read from verse 5, the Bible says, the man that tossed that thrust in the arms of flesh you know, will not see when blessing is passing by. The law, the man that thrusts in his arms of flesh, who do not trust in God, in God Jeremiah 17, read from, say, this is what the Lord says. God is the man who trusts in mankind, who makes, makes human, fle human flesh his strength and turns his heart from the Lord. Watch what it says. In verse 16, he will be like a juniper in the Araba. He cannot see when good comes, but dwells in the patchwork places in the wilderness. What is this? He cannot see when good comes. It means good will actually come, but he will not see it. I don't, need, I don't think if you get that scripture. It is possible to be planted in place of greatness and power. To be, to be in the midst of favor and yet not see it because you are not ready to receive. So many people live in the midst of blessing, but they don't experience blessing. You are like a soil. So you must prepare your heart. Live as saved. This is the last year you're going to be on earth. Though you're going to live long, but live that everything God will do for you, you know, is going to begin this year. If you, if you don't prepare yourself psychologically, mentally, spiritually, God might pass you by. He might be sending rain in the midst of all that, you know, where you are, I mean, but it will not, you will not experience it. Have you wondered why is it that two people are in the church? Your neighbor, you know, come to church, grabs his or her blessing, and go home, but you still feel dry. Hello? You are in the same church, sitting under the same atmosphere. Hello? Somebody come and worship crazy and dance and jump, and your just, elder people are dancing, and you're just looking around. It looks like you are under a closed heaven. <laughs> you don't feel anything. And somebody said, man, I was blessed today. You know? Oh, well, the service was great. But you, you, don't, you didn't feel anything. Probably because you did not prepare your heart from home. You came without expecting anything. But if you wake up in, wake up in the morning, say, man, I'm going to be blessed today. Father, I'm waiting for your blessing. Immediately you step into this place, into, you know, very quickly come close to the door. You hear them singing, the worshipers, you start dancing right from the door. Because your heart is prepared. So don't be one of those people who will see what you will see good, but it will not touch you. See, he cannot see when I mean he cannot see when good comes, but the worst in the in, in the bad places in the wilderness. I mean, you, the good comes, but you may not see it. Every day in the house of God, God releases blessing. I'm telling you, He releases healing, releases favor, releases empowerment. But our problem is our inability to feel what God is doing in the now. Say somebody, may God give you a spiritual ears and, and spiritual eyes. See, prepare your mind so you can receive. Make yourself like a soil so that you, you can receive what God, you know, has ordained for you. Now, one of the ways to become a willing soil is by observing strict holiness unto the Lord. If you read the book of, of, of um, Leviticus chapter 26, read from 3 probably to 10. Leviticus 26, 3 to 10, you will discover that blessing does not just come to, uh, blessing is not meant for everybody. Hello? Am I preaching Leviticus? Shall we read? Please, everybody read with me. No noise, please. Everybody read with me. If you follow my statutes and faithfully observe my commands, 
Okay, look at what he says. He says, I will give you rain at the right time, and land will yield its produce, and the trees of the field will bear their fruit. Do you see the condition, the prerequisite to receiving if you obey? Hello, somebody. That's what we call general rain. God can send a general favor to the public. Sometimes you see when God sends rain, it falls for the Christians and from on Christians, from believers, for believers and from believers. But there are special blessings that cannot come knocking on your door if you aren't ready to observe the command of the Almighty. Because see, this thing is not magic. We don't do magic. Christianity is not magic. It can go to places where pastor will tell you that live anyhow and you can still walk on, you know, in the blessing. You cannot walk in the blessing when you are disloyal. In fact, among, if, if you have three, four children, you know that if your child is not, you will say to your child, I'm not going to bless you with what, chewing gum or with chocolate unless you change your naughty, changes your attitude. Okay, you have to say to your son, say sorry, if not, I don't, I'm not going to give you this. And in most cases, we will not give them until they learn to, you know, to appreciate. If in God, God does not want to spoil you. While you are still lying, you're saying, doing your stuff, God is blessing you. In other words, if you're doing the same thing you've been doing, you know that it's not good. And God, you think that God is still blessing you. I don't think it's God. The enemy can bless you. But if you want a blessing that will last, you know, you need it from God. And God will not put a blessing in your life if you aren't ready to worship him. In fact, there are, you might be saying, okay, there are people that are not in the church. They don't go to church. They are not loyal. Yeah, they have been blessed. But the end will ju- justify the means. Hello? Sometimes, if you see how sinners die and how their life end, you will really thank God for your own life. Hello? So it's not because, oh, maybe these people are, your friend is prospering financially, but it's not loving God and you're wondering, well, this guy is prospering. What is the difference? The difference, when God gives you your own blessing, it will, you know, you know, trickle over to your generation. It will spill over. You will not only enjoy the blessing God is going to give you, but your generation will enjoy it. Amen. The Bible says, righteous man does what? Lives an inheritance for his children's children. For you to live an inheritance for your children, children, meaning that you must have been what blessed. Amen. Hello, that's one of the reasons we also must believe in the gospel of prosperity, but not to go to the extreme. The other thing, our brother Roland, in a share on, I was really blessed that day on prosperity. Yeah, the church needs to be blessed. God, you know, he, he wants to empower the church. If you are not blessed, we can't take nations. So that's one of the reasons we must walk in the covenant of prosperity. Hello, and to each and every one of us, God has given us a grant to take. But we must open our heart and say, Father, show us how do we take grants. And Lord, do not rely on that little money you're being paid. Start thinking, how can we, cre- no, not even no, uh, uh, opening company, but employing people. And Lord, one person in this church can begin a business that will employ the whole church. And Lord, somebody, we can create our own businesses. The problem with most people today, people are lazy. Hello? They don't want to do something or they are, are, they are fearful of stepping out. But the Bible says in the book of uh, Psalm 56 verse 3, it says when you are afraid, trust the Lord. It doesn't, everybody gets up. Sometimes, you know, I feel like, you, you understand? But don't stay there. When you are fearful, still believe that you got a God. You have a God that is bigger than your trouble. Bigger than the challenges you're facing. So this year, we must begin to step out. Hello? This is how we can experience rain. Think of what you can do. How can, you cre- how can we create business? Somebody can even bring a business topic. You call it a workshop. And tell people, this is what you want to do. You know? And talk of maybe possibly, people, people can even invest in your ideas. Hello? When this guy, Alibaba, Baba, who, who what about 160 billion now? You know, when he came for a conference to discuss on the vision God has given him. He said it was only one person that stand with him. There was, I'm, I'm sure, probably over 100 people that invited bankers, friends, where we should. But they did not believe in, in his vision. But today, Alibaba is richer than most countries. He worth about 160 billion. He lost somebody. And the church, we are still here speaking in tongues, claiming the blessings, and we're not doing anything with the favor. You got the favor, but you've got what step at. Whatever you do, do it well. He lost somebody. Let's start stepping out. What can we do this year to empower the kingdom of God? As a matter of fact, the money God is getting ready to give you is not meant for you. Hello? Because God gives you rent to worship him. How do you worship him? Through your givings, your act of, you know, love, helping people, alleviating poverty. Hello? This is how you worship God. Some of us, you think that you work to live. You don't work to live, you work to give. 
And if your mentality is just to make money and feed you and your children, then you are a failure. We should be thinking of global impact. I love somebody. If you do not have the mindset of imparting the globe, then you must be a servant. Hello? Why is it that some people die, we hear about them? But some of us will die, we don't even know them. Hello? We must be thinking of impact. Since you never think of impact. <laughs> and start from the little things. When God sends the rain this year, will you start from little things? Start giving, start loving, start imparting. Let, find things, find out what you, what you can do in the house of God. Hello? Some of us are thinking of going to win in abroad, but we're not even doing anything here. You don't talk to your neighbor. Our sister testified this morning how she's, you know, pray for somebody. Hello? And the person got healed, and the lady started seeing. And I said to my wife, I said, that is taking the gospel to the marketplaces. Amen. One of the ways churches grow is if we're able to attract new people every Sunday. They may not come and remain, but at least if they know where we are, one day the Lord will say, go back to that church. But if we come with ourselves only, we don't talk to anybody. You might not be able to pull them to the house of God, but at least talk to them at your workplace. This means taking the gospel to the marketplaces. And when you keep on talking to them, it takes you talk to, to talk to, uh, it, it takes talking to, uh, talking to people for about 50 times for them to start listening to you. Especially when it has to do with the gospel. Hello? So, do you want to live average life? Or do you want to live empowered life? A global life? Our God is a global God. Jesus trained his apostles for global impact. Hello? And that must be our mindset. Amen? And one of that, of the way to get there is to live a sin-free life. The Lord said to somebody, live a sin-free life. In the book of Psalms 1, 1 verse 3 and 2. Psalms 1, 3, Psalms 1, 1 to 3. I mean, Psalms 1, 1 to 3 is a popular scripture. Please read this scripture with me. It says, how happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked or take the part of sinners. Watch that, hello? Or take the part of what? Sinners. The sinners has what, what a part. Watch it. Say, or join a group of what mockers. Watch it. Ask yourself, where are you? Are you joining that group? Are you already in their midst? His delight is his delight is in the laws, in the laws, in the laws instructions, and he meditate on it day and night. And then verse three. <laughs> this is my emphasis. Then he is like what a tree planted by the side streams of water that bears its fruit in season. And whose leaf does not wither, whatever he does, prospers. So prerequisite. Whatever he does, prospers. So the prerequisite to receive the rain to prosper is to what uphold sin. Hello? Refrain from sin. It's not that we are perfect, but you know the things you can keep away from. There are things you, when people are gossiping, other people wanting to eat them in, in dinner, in lunch, and in, 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 in breakfast. You said, I'm not there. Hello, somebody. Lord, when you find yourself in the midst of mockers, you know, they are mocking people. You don't want to be part of it because you know you are special. You are, you are peculiar. There is something in you that is not in them. Hello? And you are expectant. You prepared. We are doing 21 days fast and praying crazy prayers every day. You know? And it continues. We, we end with a conference. You cannot do those stuff and still go back the same. And join the same thing you've been doing or join the same group, company that are there to destroy you and not encourage you. There are people that will destroy you if you don't escape from them or refrain from associating with them. Hello? Associate with people who will make you think. Associate with people who can challenge your vision and make you do better things unlike before. Hello? Stop talking with people who, is, who have a mindset. That's what we, I call she she poo mindset. Hello, somebody. Or oh, some of you are pretending right. You're not even talking to me. There are people who have that kind of she she poo mindset. Every day, hello? Obey is still a boy. Hello, Thomas is a boy. They aren't changing, they aren't progressing, they are in the same place. Hello, they are talking of the past, the past heart, the past pain, the past disappointment. Have you discovered there are people, the more they tell you their problem, the more you carry the thing on your shoulders. You feel like you are one of, you know, you carry the same thing along. You don't need those people to talk to your mind. This is a new year. Hello, said somebody, it's a new year. And a new season. Say to somebody, say new year. And a new season. And I'm going somewhere. If you aren't going with me, I'm going to go faster. In the name of Jesus. It's a new year. 
to this morning when I, I came to the church, and Pastor Pio said, he said, how did you get here first before me? I said, this is a new year. <laughs> I lost somebody. He said, and nobody beats him. I said, this is a new year. A new resolution and a new mindset. Say to somebody, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I don't know about you, but I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love somebody. My desire is to make sure we all, you know, get to the place God wants us to get to. You know, not just me getting there, but for us to collectively get to the pinnacle where God wants I and you to be. Amen? So we must learn that this is a year God is in the fast lane, and we can remain where we are. We don't want to remain where we are, even as a church. After the conference, we, not, we need to start re, re, uh, strategizing what can we do to move this church forward. And we, everybody must be carried along. Don't just be a bench warmer. Just be a Sunday, Sunday washing. What can you do to grow this church? And some of you, oh, Lord, the church needs to grow. We need more people. But from year to year, you have not even talked to nobody. How much more bringing one person to church? And Lord, impart your community. Start ministering. Adopt the blocks where you live. You know, you, ha- you live in the street. Adopt the block. Adopt that street. I said this year, I will knock on every door in my street. Hello, I'm going to share fly- flyers. I will tell them about Jesus because I want them to have meaning to their life. Do you know you're here to give meaning to your generation? Hello, you're not here to waste away. That is why one of my passions is to write books. Because when you're not here, the materials are still here. Hello, somebody. So you got to understand that you're not just ordinary person. God wants you to make global impact by not excusing sin, refraining from sin. You cannot live in sin and still impart life. One of the ways to impart life is to avoid sin. In Haggai 1, written from 911, God told the children of Israel, because you're not doing the right thing, building my house, I told you to build my house, and you're not building my house, therefore I'm going to lock the heavens, and you will not experience rain. In fact, so many people are on that close heaven, because God allowed them to be there. Hello? Because of their sins and their disobedience. Haggai 1, read from 9 to 11. Do you know that when we, most of us, believe, some of us believe that when we sin, God will come down from heaven to punish us. No. Hello, somebody. If you sin, as somebody close and please stay with me. If you sin, God does not just come down. God is too big to start chasing after you to punish you. Hello, somebody. But there is a spiritual principle in place. He said to Abraham, whosoever bless you shall be blessed. And whosoever curse you shall be cursed. It doesn't mean I am Abraham because I'm in the covenant of Abraham. It doesn't mean when you curse me, God will come down chasing you to curse you. But the, the blessing, the, 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 the spiritual establishment is already there. The principle God has established is already there. As soon as you bless, when you break your principle, the Bible says, whosoever that break the hedge, the serpent will bite. If you break a certain principle, the serpent bites you. Hello? It's not that God will come down and say, no, a law has already been placed. Hello? You will be subjected to that law. It's like the law of gravity. When you jump from, you know, 10 story building, what happens? You'll be subjected to the law of gravity. Hello, somebody? So you've got to understand that if you are sinning and you're not willing to do the right thing, hello, God will leave you to be subjected to the law of punishment, the law of drought, a law and of, of close heaven. So many people are living in open, close heaven. There are people that no matter how many pastors, go and meet all the bishops around the world. Let them lay hands on you. Your problem will still remain the same. There will be no change until you do a U-turn. So, sometimes we don't need other people to pray for us. Hello, somebody. All we need is start putting our life in order. Hello. Do the right and reconcile with certain people. I always say that there may be people you don't have to go chasing after. There may be people you don't even need to give a call because they are not going where you, they, where you are going. Hello. After you've done what you needed to do. But there may be people you may have to reach out to again depending on what lead to the situation since you've not been talking with the people. Hello. And correct some things in your house. Correct your marriage. Hello. If your children are living, they are Christian you know, parents. And they love God, but their children still bring women to their house. Hello. And, and those children live under your roof. If they are having their own house, they can choose to do whatever they want. To do. They can make a choice. But if you live under my roof, hello, you are under me and you must follow the rules of the house. People can bring sin into your house. Hello. Even your own children. Eli find himself in trouble. Was he a lie? Because of his weakness. Though he talked to his children, but he wasn't faithful enough. And you want God to bless you. God bless me. 
You see, Christianity is not, what we have today around the world is, is entertainment. Pastors no longer teach the church folk to repent because they don't want to lose members. Hello? And what about if we have all the crowds around the world and yet everyone is heading to hell? What happens? Hello? So we must be, I, I was telling my wife the other day, I said sometimes there are things I said, I said to people in the church, it looks hard, it, it doesn't make me popular. You know, I said, but this is what I call the burden of leadership. I said to my wife, if I leave everybody to do what they want, it, this house will be in chaos. Now, this, you need to say, though somebody feel like that's too hard, but I still need to say it as a leader. At the long run, if we help the church, it might not make me popular. You know, most leaders that are very frank, they don't have too many friends. Hello? Because if you want to be the friends of everyone, you cannot keep to certain principle because you want to please everyone. And I know even in this church, some of you are older than me and some, I'm older than some of you. Yes, today, was it yesterday? It's my 10, in 42 year, and you know, birthday, amen? I'm still waiting for some of your gift, those who didn't give me yesterday. Praise God. <laughs> I'm campaigning for me, and I just let me campaign for me, somebody. So many people blessed me yesterday, but those of you who we are not here, please, I'm waiting for your gift. <laughs> anyway, go to have some fun. But you're not keen to understand that I say, some, I was telling my wife yesterday, I said, some people here are older than me, and some of them are older than them, and sometimes it's very hard to lead people when they are older. Like Pastor Pio, he's my, he's my, I love him so much. This man has been a pillar in this ministry. I've done so much. And now, but that, there are maybe also things Pastor Pio might do, but I will, just, I will not keep I could, He doesn't do any bad stuff, please remember. But sometimes he might do something I want to talk but I just keep quiet because I may be praying for him. He might do something I think maybe for him it's right, maybe for me it's not right. Hello? But, I, but once in a while also I need to speak because if you are in the church and you come, you come with seniority, you will never be blessed. Hello, somebody? In the ministry, there is nothing like seniority. What about Aaron and Moses? Why did God not choose Aaron? Because Aaron was the senior to what? To Moses. But he called the senior brother. And Moses and father call him God. The Bible says Aaron is like, was like a God to, Moses was like a God to what? To Aaron. So if you're coming and saying, I'm the big guy here, you will never get anything. Hello, somebody? So we must make certain hard decisions this year. Talk to people that don't want to hear us. Hello? Sometimes rebuke people if they are not in the right path. Hello, somebody. If you must get, because if, if anything happens, God will question you. If I'm not preaching the truth, telling you the truth, hello, somebody. I said to my wife from the day we got married, say, if I do what is not right, tell me. She is here today. I never said, my wife, you are a woman. Oh, I'm the senior pastor here. I silent her. I said, you have right. Yesterday, she bring it up a topic. I said, I said, these are the reasons I do some things I do. You know, I said, this is, this is called the burden in leadership. And then I reminded my wife of a lady in the, at her workplace. She told me that this lady, sometimes people will say she's bad, she's this and that. But she said she'd been, she, she, she thought that, that same way in that pattern. She was thinking that the lady wasn't too great. You know, but she later discovered that this lady is actually a good lady. He said, but the, one of the reasons, the ladies actually, she, she went in first principle. She went to make people work. You've been paid for the work, and you've got to do the work. And she's the leader. They are answerable to her. So in trying to get them to do the job, they think that she's their enemy. I said to my wife, I said, look at that lady now. Is, is she not, you just told me that you discovered that she's doing a good job, even though some, some workers hate her. I said, she carry a burden. That's the burden of leadership. And there is, nothing she, there is nothing she can do about it. She needs to do what she needs to do in order to get the company running. If God entrusts you with leadership, you have to make sure you do what you need to do. It doesn't matter who's all is God. Hello? So in this church, this year we must instill principles. Hello, hello somebody? We must, you know, do the things we haven't done. Say the things we are not saying. Hello? Try to make things, because if we don't want to change, we end up in change. And if we really want to see this friend, then we need to be willing to be disciplined. Hello? Willing to be talked to. Willing to honor other people. And let this de develop a, a culture of, of, of honor and loyalty. I've written a book here called The Language of Honor. And I know some of you may have buy this book, but I don't mean it didn't buy you. Buy it, but you haven't read it. Hello? Buy that book again. If you have bought, if you have a book on, on, on language of honor, read it. That will probably help us. We we'll begin to honor each other. Hello? 
if there is a spirit of honor in this atmosphere, anytime we come and pray, God will release what blessing. Amen. But if we are dishonoring everybody, don't care of nobody, hello, and you want God to honor you, he's not going to honor you. Hello, somebody. Hello. He's not going to honor you. I'm not trying to say I want people to come and bow for you. I'm not looking for that. I'm not God. But you've got to understand that even as God has placed me here as the pastor of the church, God got some reason. Even me, oftentimes I wonder, say, God, why did you call me? Oh, nobody's talking to me right now. <laughs> I said, but I would have liked to do a different thing. But I'm not regretting. Please don't misunderstand me. I love what I do. But sometimes I say, Father, you should have called another person from my family, not me. Hello? So why is it that God brought you into this place? It's not by accident you're in this church. The Bible says, the, 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 God blessings is what? In the book of James, it talks about blessings that come from heaven. That there is no variable of change. That God is good. And the things he gives is good. And there is no variable of changes in him. That's a scripture like that. So anytime God brings you and places you on the local church, God has got a reason. And start asking, it may be, I may be the best pastor that God will give to you. Hello, somebody? Does this sound somehow how somehow you is? This is the truth. Hello, somebody? It may go to, I'm not trying to say I'm, I'm the best around the world. But it may go to other churches, that is not where you belong. And you're going to get hurt, got pain, things will happen. But if God bring you here and make me your pastor, even if I do anything that hurts you, you take it lightly. You will not even help, you will not feel it because you know this is where you belong. But if you live where God has placed you and start jumping from chart to chart because you're being disciplined, you will, you will look for... T- I know a lady, I just, the other day she called me during the New Year, I said, where are you now? She said, oh, I joined another church. In the last two years, she has gone to about 13 churches. Hello? And the other day she told me that the Lord told me to join another church and, and that was where she left before she started going from church to church, church to church, and she ended here again and lived here, you know? And finally she gone back to that church after two years. Of testing about 13 waters. Oh, nobody's talking to me right now. So, appreciate what God has given to you. Start living holy, doing the right thing. You know, contributing to the church. Not say, oh, Lord, I want our church to grow. You just talk of growth, but you don't do nothing. Hello? Start doing something that will change the face of the church. When God sees your labor of love, he will begin to honor us. Amen? And I pray that this year you shall be honored. It's your year of honor. Amen. I said to somebody, it's your year of honor. Amen. God will bring, you know, we cause rain you are not even expecting. Every morning I say, Father, send rain on me. God will bring rain you are not even expecting. It's a year of spiritual rain. God will send rain. Any day you see a physical rain raining, please understand that in the same vein, spiritual rain is falling on you. Amen. And I see you coming out from that pit. Coming up from that limitation, coming up from that hindrance, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord show you his light, and may you walk into the light. You will not miss out from what God has ordained for you. In the name of Jesus, miracle will come knocking, favor will come knocking, destiny will come knocking. In the name of Jesus, you shall be planted by the rivers, by the, by, by, by the bank of the sea, and you shall have leaf, and you shall have fruit. Your fruit will be for the healing of the nations. Your leaf will be for the healing of the nation. You shall not run dry. You shall not run empty. In the name of Jesus Christ. You shall always be filled with the rain of heaven. May God send his send rain on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be dry this year. Your head will receive water. Your children will receive water. Your business will receive rain. Your, your, your destiny will receive rain. Your purpose on earth will receive rain. You shall not run dry. In Jesus' name. Shall we stand up and give him praise and glory. Praise and glory. Praise and glory. Father, we give you praise and glory. We give you praise and glory. Praise and glory. Praise and glory. Shall we begin to praise him? Begin to thank him. Tell him this year you're ready to worship him. You're ready to trust in him. And you're ready to be a soil that is willing to receive rain. Don't close yourself. Don't be a closed soil. Don't be a hardened soil. Be a soil that is ready to receive rain. Be a soil that is ready to receive rain. 
Be a soil that is ready to receive rain. Organize yourself this year in such a way that every day you are expecting something to fall on you. Organize your spirit in such a way that you are expecting something to fall on you. Don't live as if you are not expecting any blessing. Because this year, you will not remain the same again. You will not remain the same. Oh, Rabbi Shaka, Rabbi. Cabra Santorobo. Lebro Shididianda. Cosididi Arabo Shididi. Oh, Lord. Rabbi Shia. Thank you, Jesus. send or God is sending to you and your family is there anything that is a hindrance or that may be a hindrance to what God is about to do this year anything that will hinder you from unlocking the ring ask God to remove it right now please I want somebody to pray I want us to show brokenness before the Lord anything that will hinder you this year because you are prepared to receive you're prepared to receive anything that will hinder you this year from receiving. I want you to say, Father, take it away from me. Take it away. Is there any attitude in us that is not right? Any habit, chronic sin presented before God is not here to condemn you. Our Father is here to help you. Our Father is here to help you. Is there anything you're not doing right? Tell him that they say you want to get it right. You want to make it right with him. Whatever have made the enemy to accuse you. Close that door right now. Close it with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus can't speak better thing than the blood of Abel. Whatever has become a hindrance that constitutes a hindrance that possesses you know, <coughs> limitation to where you're going. I wanted to drop it right now at the, foot of, uh, at the feet of Christ. Release your burden. Release your pain. Release your confusion. Release your fear. He's in this place. Oh, Rabbi, shut up. Somebody talk to him. He's your father. Rebo sick Alaba, shake Alaba. Talk to King of King and the Lord of Lords. He is in this place. Thank you, Jesus. The angels of God are moving around. They are here right now. They are collecting the things as you drop it. They are collecting it. Drop your burden. They, call, they are collecting your burden. Your burden. Your sickness. Your fears. Your pains. Your weaknesses. Drop it right now. Because you can't afford to miss the blessings of God this year. You can't afford to miss his greatness, his favor. You can't afford to miss his favor. Cry.
ask God to send rain, you will not miss out from this prayer. You will not miss out from what God is about to do. You will not miss out from this rain from heaven. You will see when the rain comes. You will not be blind when the rain comes. Pray and tell God, tell him that you will not be blind when this rain comes. You will not be blind to the rain from heaven. You shall see it. It will not pass you by. Lord, we pray today in the name of Jesus that when this rain comes, it will not pass us by. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, the rain of greatness, the rain of power, the rain of favor will not pass us by. In the name of Jesus, begin to break every limitation in the spirit realm. Break every limitation, spiritual limitation, physical limitations. We break down every limitation. Limitations from demonic realm. We break it down. Somebody release fire right now. Release fire to consume that cloud. Fire, cut, 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 For the fire in the air, fire in the sea, fire in the land, fire in the bush, fire in the atmosphere. For I let anything that become a hindrance to where we are going, anything that has become a hindrance to where we are going. We send fire to consume it in the name of Jesus. In the book of Genesis chapter 24 verse 1. Genesis 24 verse 1. I want you to pray with this scripture. We are believing God for the blessings of Abraham this year. That is what it means to be abundance of rain. The Bible says in Genesis 24 verse 1. Shall we read? Abraham was now old getting on in years. And the Lord had blessed him in everything. And the Lord had blessed him in everything. Pray that you will not leave this art without a blessing, without a rain. You will not pass into 2016 without rain. Can you pray that prayer? And the Lord has blessed him in everything. The Lord has blessed him in everything. Can we pray that prayer? God, bless us. Father, bless us. Send rain. Don't let me make you pray. You pray by yourself. Ask God to bless you in everything. Bless you in knowledge. Bless you in wisdom. Bless you with ways of salvation. Ask God to bless you. The Bible says God bless him in everything. God bless him in everything. Somebody pray that prayer. Don't be tired. God bless him in everything. God bless him in everything. God bless him in everything. Ask him to bless you in everything. This year, you shall experience rain. It's the moment to pray. Ask him to bless your family. Bless your community. Bless your children in everything. Every aspect of your life. Pray that God will bless every aspect of your life. That you will indeed experience rain. The work of your hands will grow. Your marriage will grow. God will visit your home. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Father, you bless Abraham in everything. Bless this church. Bless every member of this church. In the name of Jesus. 
one more scripture, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Verse, 1 Corinthians 9 verse 8. I, I want us to pray with this scripture once again. And please don't take it lightly. 1 Corinthians, sorry, 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 8. Rabo Sikiri Barabashik. Shall we read and pray with this scripture? And God is able to make every grace. The other day, as we read the scripture, it was like a new scripture to me. The Lord, the Lord ministered to me through the scripture. And God is able to, mean, to, to make every grace overflow to you. So that in every way, always having everything you need, you may excel in every good work. Now pray that God is able to make every grace have a flow to you. Pray that this year God will make every grace, every grace of friend you need to overflow to you. Please, can you pray that prayer? The grace you need. Please open your mouth. Open your mouth, please. God will make the grace you need to overflow. I don't know where you need grace in your life. In the areas of, of, of residence, in the areas of visas we need, in the areas of our job, in the areas of our marriage, in the areas of our children. I don't know the aspect you need grace, but grace will overflow. Grace will overflow. Somebody pray grace will overflow your life. So that in every way, always having everything you need, may grace overflow. The grace that causes us to have the peace we need the grace that causes us to have the connections we need the grace that causes us to live in purity and in righteousness the grace that causes us to live above sin the grace that causes us to overcome temptation somebody has got to give you this overflowing grace overflowing grace overflowing grace overflowing grace Overflowing grace, the overflow of overflowing rain cause us to live victoriously. Oh, glory to God! Overflowing rain, somebody ask God to give you an overflow, an overflow, the anointing of overflow, grace to overflow, glory to overflow, the grace that will cause you have that what you need. Remember, this is the season of prayer. That is why I'm still leading us into this prayer this morning. Pray a little bit more, a little bit more. Ask God to cause some things to overflow. In the name of Jesus Christ, may this grace that causes overflow rest on your life. May this anointing that causes an overflow rest on your life. May this favor that causes an overflow to rest on your life. I pray that this favor is on you. You will have what you need. This favor will cause you to have what you need. This grace will cause you to have what you need. This rain will cause you to have what you need. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabbi, you may excel in everything. Pray that always having what you need. That you may excel in every good work. This in the name of Jesus. An anointing to excel. Grace to excel. Favor to excel. Somebody pray that prayer. Excelling anointing. You will become an excellent man or woman in what you do. Spirit of excellence will rest on you. The anointing of excellence will rest on you. In this new year, you will excel in your mind. Excel in wisdom. Excel in knowledge. Excel in favor. A silent excellence, a silent prosperity. Let the grace that causes excellency to rest on you. Men will see you and call you my excellence. My excellency. Women will see you and call you my excellency. The things you do will sell. We are sell. Your marriage will excel. In the name of Jesus, your environment will begin to excel. Your atmosphere will carry the order. The of excellence because greater cell is on this place greater cell is in your life in the name of Jesus receive this grace in the name of Jesus receive this grace in the name of Jesus receive this grace I pray for somebody this morning 
May this grace follow you home. In the name of Jesus, grace to overflow. Grace to overflow. An overflowing anointing. Overflowing fire. Overflowing favor. Pursue somebody. Follow somebody home. Follow somebody home. Break every barrier. Break every hindrance. Break every pain. Break every struggle. Remove every mask. Spiritual mask. Physical mask. That have masked us people. I command thee catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Every mask. That burden on somebody's shoulder. Father let your spirit move and remove that burden. Remove that sickness in our system. Father, unmask somebody. Father, the Bible says in this mountain, the Lord will remove the shrew that covers our nation. Lord, and the veil that has covered our people. In this mountain, remove every shrew, every veil, every covering, fear, sickness, hindrances, pain. Lord, the pain we have carried for years. Lord, I pray today as we leave this place, we will feel hopeful. You will, oh God, bless our duration. Give us duration to life. Cause us to discover our purposes. Oh God, may our destiny flourish. Father, cause our destiny to flourish in this season, Lord. Father, cause us not just to have the glory in the inside, but let the glory manifest. Your glory will manifest. If you're here today, the Lord says to somebody who have cried it and said, Lord, I feel I have something in the inside. But I'm not seeing it in the outside. It's not been seen. Father, cause my glory to be to be visible. Some of you have been praying, or somebody here, but saying, Lord, cause my glory to be visible. The Lord says, Your glory will be greatly visible in the year 2015. Amen. You will not just carry it in the inside, but it will rub you, it will rub you on the outside. You will feel it in the outside. People will see it. It will draw glory to you and favor to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.